using Wireshark to reinforce our learning. Let's begin. One of the comments I often hear from students who are going through a series and enjoying it is that they really love it when we use a protocol analyzer to help reinforce and validate what the network is really doing. Because at the end of the day, the truth of what's really happening is on the wire itself. And by using a protocol analyzer, we can dig out that information to reinforce what we're learning. And also, if the network isn't performing correctly, we could use that information for troubleshooting as well. One of the challenges that comes up, especially for people new to computer networking, is that they're trained on this thing called the OSI model, which is right here in all of its seven layers of glory. And then, after they're told all about the OSI reference model and the interaction between the layers, they're then told, we don't use that. Instead, we use the TCP IP protocol suite. And the reality is that the IETF, which came up with the TCP IP protocol suite, after all said and done, they won. So it's actually the TCP IP protocol suite that we use. And they're also told it's only four layers. The network access, internet, transport, and application. Those same students are told that these three top layers of the OSI model, which they've learned, map pretty closely to the application layer of the TCP IP protocol suite, and that the bottom two layers of the OSI reference model map to the network access layer. And what I'd like to share with you and what's a stumbling block for a lot of people is that when we talk about protocol stacks and the TCP IP world that we live in today, we really don't talk directly about either of these protocol stacks. So as you and I enjoy the benefits of a beautiful TCP IP protocol stack today, whether it's IP version four or IP version six, what we're doing is we're actually borrowing some labels and numbers from the OSI reference model to do it. So for example, these bottom two layers, which are layers one and two in the OSI reference model, we bring them right over. We're gonna use those terms. So even though the TCP IP protocol suite officially only has this one that combines those two, we're breaking them out again over here for layers one and two with the same names. So physical layer and data link. At layer three of the OSI reference model, which we call in TCP IP the internet layer, we're gonna borrow the name and the number from the OSI side and we're going to simply call that layer three, the network layer. We're going to do the same thing with the transport layer. So layer four of the OSI reference model, we're going to call layer four over here. And that's the only one that keeps the exactly the same name across all these three stacks. Again, this being the official TCP IP. And this column on the far right are the actual terms and labels that we use today to describe this TCP IP protocol suite. And then the application layer of the TCP IP protocol suite, which represents the top three layers of the OSI reference model, we don't even really call that layer five. We just call that upper layer or application layer services. So at the end of the day, we've got our physical data link network transport and application. And as data is going up and down a protocol stack, for example, this one on the right, we'll often refer to the data here as segments, at layer three as packets, at layer two as frames, and at layer one, we'll typically refer to them as bits of data. So regarding the question, whose stack is it anyway? We are using the TCP IP protocol suite today, although it borrows a lot of the numbers and naming from the OSI reference model as we describe the TCP IP protocol suite today. Now, in a lot of our videos, we do reinforce the concepts of the protocols in use with a protocol analyzer because the packets are not gonna lie and the truth really is on the wire. Let's take a look at a packet capture in a protocol analyzer and we'll look at mapping the specific details of what we capture on the wire to our protocol stack, TCP IP. So here's a capture of data inside of Wireshark, which is a protocol analyzer regarding a telnet session. Now here's what's really important to be aware of with Wireshark as we reinforce what we've learned about the protocol suite TCP IP. And that's this, in TCP IP at the transport layer, we call those guys segments. At the network layer, we call them packets. At the data link layer, we refer to them as frames. And at the physical, we have bits. Now that's all well and good, but here's the important part from a Wireshark analysis. Wireshark is going to include at the top, at the very beginning, something called a frame. But this frame that we're looking at right here, that is not referring to an ethernet frame of data. In Wireshark, that frame information is just like a reader's digest overview from a Wireshark perspective of all the stuff it collected. For example, why did it color the frame the way it did with its coloring code? And, and what frame number was it inside of this capture? What time was it captured? See, those details aren't really part of the actual packets themselves. This is just Wireshark additional information on top of it. 
So the key element I want you to be aware of is that in Wireshark, when it says frame, as it does right here, just know that that's a Wireshark add-on. Wireshark is going to show us the lower levels first and then work its way up. So for example, on Ethernet, we have an Ethernet destination source address inside of the Ethernet header. So this would equate to layer 2, which is our frame from a Ethernet networking perspective, a frame of data. That includes the Ethernet headers that have the source and destination address. As we continue to de-encapsulate this or look at the higher levels, next we have the Internet protocol. And so the Internet protocol would be exactly layer 3, which we would commonly refer to as the network layer. And so in the IP header at layer 3, we have the source address, destination address, and the other details that we would normally find in a layer 3 IP header. Next we have TCP. And if we open that up, TCP directly corresponds to the transport layer of the TCP IP protocol suite. So we have our source port and our destination port, the sequence numbers, and all the other overhead inside of the TCP header at layer 4 of the TCP IP protocol suite, or how we commonly refer to the TCP IP protocol suite. And last but certainly not least, if we open up the very bottom of this, it has the Telnet data, an example of an application layer service, Telnet. So we don't call it in the TCP IP protocol suite, we don't call it layer five, and we simply call this the application layer. And Telnet is one example of many application layer services. Others would include HTTP, DNS, SMTP, and so on. So in this video, we've identified how we can use a protocol analyzer like Wireshark to help reinforce the details of what's happening on our network, because at the end of the day, the truth is on the wire. I appreciate you joining me. I've had a good time. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.